So you're here to talk about remote work. It's good. It's so good to have everyone here. If you weren't here for the morning session, um, you know, I just want to say that it's it's not the best time in the world, <laughs> um, but it is incredible that we can build some community and bring some people together and hopefully for us be of service as Nobel. Um, just a quick overview of who we are, if, in case you weren't here before. I'm Bud, I'm the co-founder and chief strategy officer of Nobel. We're a global transformation agency. We do a lot of org design and, and change management work. And I have with me, Jane. Jane, introduce yourself, please. Hey, I'm Jane Garza. I'm the managing director of our Los Angeles team. I've been uh, in the background during the, morning, the early morning, and it's fun to be on this side and see how many participants we have and how many places all over the world you're all coming from. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, uh, to start, we'd love a little exercise, if you, if you could. Um, take a photo of your work setup. Uh, it could be conventional, could be highly non-conventional. Um, and share on social, either Twitter or LinkedIn, um, particularly with the hashtag, hashtag changeatworkconf. Um, we're going to be doing some giveaways and some prizes and things like that after the conference. So, um, you know, let us know, uh, let us see where you're working. Uh, it, everything here for me looks mildly in control and everything behind my laptop is just pure chaos um, and plates and things like that. What about you, Jane? I mean, yeah, I've like, I've, because we're running this webinar, I have like 10 stations and various screens in front of me, but it looks very calm, hopefully, to, in terms of what you see. Nice. Um, so quickly before we've got, we've got our host lined up already, we're running a couple minutes late. I just want to be really quick on this. Some food for thought as we get into remote work. Um, just some things to hold, uh, to hold in your mind as you, as you listen to very, very, very smart and inspiring folks. One is a change of tools without a change of culture will cause harm. We, we know there are lots of organizations right now rushing to go remote and are adopting new tools for the very first time. And without thinking about the culture of the team, you'll actually, you can reinforce some pretty bad behaviors and toxic behaviors. And you can also sort of sweep under the rug or make invisible some things that really needed some light on them. And this whole, this whole concept comes from um, the notion of socio-technical change. Um, you can go really deep and nerd out on this. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a field of, of, of work in the org dev sector. But essentially what it says is like, we've got these two things. We've got sort of the socio, which is like people, relationships, rewards, authority, culture, sort of the human side of work. And then we've got the technical side of work and that's tools, procedures, tasks, related knowledge. Um, and then last, these are a pro unless these are optimized jointly like that we really think about how the tools and the humans work together we can actually start to sub optimize our organizations and cause a lot of chaos and harm um and i think that's what we're going to talk about today that it's not just about tools like there's so many companies right now just rushing to to talk about tools and um and i know and probably anyone who wasn't already remote is thinking like my god what tools do i pick but we want you to also think about what's the culture side of it. Um, and so I'm gonna hand off to um, Jane to really talk us through what it's like to go through that, that process because in our organization, she's the one who's thinking so often about how we can empower our teams with tools, but she also has a deep understanding of the change process itself and understands that it's not just about adopting a new tool, it's really about bringing people along through that journey. So Jane, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna hand it over to you. Great. Okay. Um, one second. Dun, I'll do hold music. Dun, 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 yes, dun, 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 There Thank we go. My screen. Ah, beautiful. Um, yeah, so I'll be quick because we're about to jump in with our first speaker and I want to give her all the time she can get. So first, I think I just wanted to normalize real quick. I know a lot of you are, as we've seen all around the internet, people are going remote overnight. And I think, um, one of my favorite lessons around change comes from one of my favorite change researcher, researchers, Cantor, um, and it's Cantor's law that everything looks like failure in the middle. So if you're feeling like, oh, this is why we never did remote working. This is why I didn't let people work from home because it's hard and messy. It probably is messy right now. It'll take a second to adjust. And I just kind of wanted to normalize that everyone probably feels a little bit discombobulated and that's the norm of change. You're in that middle point where everything is like, that 
the squiggly line of uh, failure until you figure out what the right path is to communicate together and make decisions, et cetera. Um, the second bit is that remote work really is a cultural change, not a format change. So it's, it's really thinking about like, um, what is our culture around how we work remotely versus just like we've changed formats and we're going to do the same exact thing that we've always done. If I take out the word remote from the talks that are in this section, they're really all talks about culture. They're talks about hiring, about diversity and inclusion, about creativity at work. And so that's really what we're talking about today is culture just in a different setting. And I just want to make sure we don't lose that piece. Um, and to Bud's point, at the end of the day, I think our gut impulse around remote work is what is the right tool for remote work, where really it's like, what are the right behaviors and rhythms around those tools? How do we make sure we're meeting at the right time, making decisions in the most public ways, et cetera, so that those tools help supplement our culture versus the other way around, we build everything around the, the tool itself. And and with all of that in mind, I think we just want to get you thinking about now being the time to kind of recalibrate your culture because you are resetting and everything is in a state of motion. It's a perfect time to rethink all of those practices. Everything is sort of in flux right now for a lot of us, a lot of uncertainty. And it really is like what's in that right now. So what better time to rethink like, is that the right meeting to have at this time? Is that the right way to make this decision? Maybe we should try a completely new strategy. And I'm hoping that these talks will kind of guide you there.